want to see the subclavian groove on your clavicle. Your trapezius attaches to the this lateral third of your clavicle and the superior part of your spine here. Your latissimus dorsi attaches to this ledge of the intertrabecular groove of your humerus. Your rhomboid major attaches to this portion of your scapula. Your minor. Your vertebral. Your ver rhomboid minor attaches above that on your vertebral border. Above that, your latissimus, your levator scap attaches. Your serratus anterior attaches on your anterior scapula on your whole border. Your deltoid attaches to the anterior part of your clavicle, your chromium process, and the posterior to your spine. Your teres major attaches, that are shown here, to the this part of your inferior scap, your teres minor, right above that. Your triceps long head above that. Your supraspinatus attaches to the top of your greater tuberosity. Your infra, oh, also to the supraspinatus fossa. Infraspinatus, infraspinatus fossa, as well as below your supraspinatus on the greater tubercle. Your subscapularis attaches to your subscapular fossa, as well as your lesser tubercle of the humerus. Your biceps long head attaches to the infraglenoid tubercle. Superglenoid, super sorry, superglenoid tubercle. Sorry. Inside there, okay. in there. Your biceps short head attaches to the lateral most part of your coracoid. Cor yeah, coracoid. Your coracobrachialis attaches to this part of your coracoid. And this is your pec minor attachment on as well as on the coracoid. Your pec major attaches to the lateral part of your humerus. Your pec, your brachialis attaches to the distal anterior portion of your humerus as well as this portion of your lacrinon right here, brachialis. Your triceps long head, we said attached to the top of here, your triceps lateral head, it's going to be this posterior attachment, your triceps medial head is going to cover the most distal posterior part of your humerus, your brachioradialis attaches to your lateral supracondylar ridge, the topmost part, and also goes down to the above the stylid process on the radius. Your common extensor tendon is on your lateral side for your extensors. Your common flexor tendon is the epicondyle of your medial epicondyle. <laughs> your extensor carpi radialis longus is on your extensor side. It's your carpi radialis longus. Brevis is below that where your extensors attach. Your extensor carpi radialis longus also goes to the dulcer, dul, dorsal side of your hand. Carpi radialis to the first. Second. This is longest. Brevis goes to the second. Third. Or third. third. Sorry. Brevis. Second. Second longest. Second. Brevis. Third. Okay. Brevis. I was mixed up the metacarpals and um, extensor digitorum goes to here. Your extensor digitorum, your indices. Extensor indices would be your index finger. Index finger. Your extensor digiti minimi would go to your pinky finger. Your extensor carpi ulnaris attaches to the base of the fifth metacarpal. Your pronator teres attaches to the, above your medial epicondyle, on the medial upper, supracondylar ridge, as well as the right below your ulnar tuberosity and where your brachialis attached. And then it crosses over to the radialis to follow below the supinator on the lateral side of the radius. Your flexor carpi radialis is going to be on your palmar side, on your hand, attaches to the base of your second metacarpal. Some people say it's third too, but it's always going to be second at least. Your flexor carpi ulnaris attaches to the base of your fifth metacarpal. 
your flexor digitorum superficialis attaches to the middle phalanx of your fingers. Your flexor digitorum profundus attaches to the distal phalanx of your fingers. It also attaches to the this portion of your ulna. <laughs> Um, flexor pollicis longus attaches on the back. It goes from the, I guess, medial interosseous border of your radial on the posterior side across the interosseous membrane to attach to the ulna. So it crosses over this area here. It also goes to your, the palmar side. Palm flexor pollicis longus goes to the distal phalanx of your thumb. Here, your supinator attaches to on the anterior side. Oops, sorry. Atta yeah, anterior side. It's going to attach below your brachialis attachment here, so medial and inferior to the ulnar tuberosity, and it's going to attach on the lateral side of the ra the ulna or radius. So attaches from here to here for supination. <coughs> if you can see these two spots here. Right here. Okay. The pronator quadratus attaches on the anterior side of both. It makes a little square here. It just sits like that across the interosseous membrane for pronating. Your abductor pollicis longus attaches to the base of your first metacarpal. And then it also attaches on the posterior side, here, no, here, what do you say? Hi, doctor. Pollicis, Pollicis longus. longus. That's middle the one that comes posterior. from the radius. Yeah, the middle part the of the radius of the interosseous border. Mm -hmm. Which goes from here to here. To the base of the first metacarpal to tra trapezium. So that is this. Here. Okay. Trapezium. Extensor policies longest. Extensor policies longest goes first on the extensor side, attaches to the distal part of your thumb, and also is on back of here, but this isn't sitting right, so I'm confused now. That's why. It's on the posterior side? Yeah. So this is your adductor pollicis longus. From here is going to be your extensor pollicis longus. It goes from the ulna to the interosseous membrane. Your extensor pollicis brevis comes from the radius to the interosseous membrane. The only one that crosses and attaches to two bones is the adductor pollicis longus. In your dorsal, palmar, and derossii, attached to your metacarpals. Okay. Thanks, Randy. You. Yeah.